Good evening, everyone. For those who weren't here yesterday, my name is Kevin. I'll be serving as the press conference moderator for uh, the next three days, including today, of course. Uh, just a couple of things procedurally. We have about uh, two minutes or so before the UCLA, UCLA locker room is, is open. Um, but procedurally, I want to welcome everyone. I appreciate you being here in Albany. Um, with regards to UCLA, Seth Dahl is their sports information contact and will be able to assist uh, following this press conference. If you would, please be sure that your cell phones are silenced. Again, as a reminder, no video recording. Press conferences will be available via FTP from Hammond Communications. And if you need that information, uh, we have that available in the back. Still photography is permitted, though flash photography is not. When you have a question, please raise your hand and we will get the microphone to you. Please be sure to announce your name as well as your affiliation, both so the student athletes and coaches are aware of who they're speaking with, but also for the transcription and those who are uh, going to watch the, the recording. When addressing student athletes, please do so by name specifically if possible. Again, that makes it easier, more efficient for the transcription and the recording. The procedure for uh, the press conferences for post game, the coach will provide an opening statement, which will be no more than two minutes. Questions will be addressed to student athletes only with a maximum of eight minutes. The student athletes will be released and the coaches will then answer questions for a maximum of 10 minutes. At the time the coaches and student athletes leave their locker rooms, those locker rooms are open for the media and there's a 30 minute maximum for that. Following the time on the dais for the coaches, please do not interview coaches outside of the curtain. We have a secondary media interview area which we will escort you to along with uh, those who you want to speak with. Any questions in the meantime? Yes, sir. The locker rooms, so from here, you're gonna go out the curtains and go left. Just continue to follow the building around. This is a circle, so eventually you'll get to the door uh, that will allow you access. Expected for UConn. They'll be second, as a reminder, they're, the winning team is going second tonight. Uh, Kristen Williams, Nafisa Collier, Crystal Dangerfield, and of course, Coach Ariema.
UCLA is, is on their way. Uh, their locker room is now open. Again, that's a 30 minute max for locker room. As you can see, we're joined by team members from UCLA, head coach Corey Close, senior Kennedy mm. Burke, and junior Japrice Dean. Procedurally, mm -hmm. for those on the dais, a coach will ask that you provide a, a two minute or less opening statement. Then we'll have uh, questions for the student athletes. And ladies, please be sure to speak into the microphone so that we can get it on the recording as well as here in the room. The student athletes will be excused, and then coach, will, you'll have 10 minutes for a press conference after that. Okay. If you would, please. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know what to say other than uh, this, that talk in the locker room. I've been doing this 26 years, and it doesn't get any easier. Um, I, <clears throat> I, I told, asked the team, you know, we lost to Loyola Marymount, who's a good team, lots of respect for them at the beginning of the year, but if I had told them that if they would stay focused on the process and uh, keep a growth mindset and get better and give to each other every day that they could end up playing at this level and competing at this level possession by possession with UConn, would they have thought that was possible? And I'm not sure they would have been able to dream that big at that point when we were really disappointed after our opening game. And to watch them, um, they really taught this, I think I said this yesterday, but they just continued to do it. They taught this old lady about all the things that I say out loud, but they made it go a little deeper in my heart about what can happen if you stay focused on getting better every day and truly making a difference in each other's lives as teammates. If you're a great teammate and you grow every day, that something special can happen. And I believed it, and I, I've seen it over time, but um, they really seared it on my heart. And uh, I'm, are they, you know, it's hard because we didn't come to play close. We came to compete to win. And we believed it and fought for it. And, um, but all, all year long, and especially in the postseason, I've told them over and over again that be where your feet are moment by moment. And don't worry about the past or what could or could not happen in the future. And just make sure you finish empty. And uh, as their head coach, I could look them in the eye and I could say, you can have peace. You finished empty. And as a head, as a head coach, that's all I can ask for. Thank you, Coach. We will now open it up for questions from the media. Up here on the right, Doug. Again, as a reminder for the student athletes only at this point, please. Uh, Doug Feinberg, the AP. Girls, congratulations on a, a good season. Kennedy, that fourth quarter, you guys were up one, and they think they scored the first six and then went on a 15-4 run. Was it something they did, or just what was the difference in that fourth quarter that got them over the hump? The biggest difference was our defense, and that's what we're known for. Um, we made some huge stops. I think we did like four stops in a row and it made the change in the game. Next question. Up here again on the right. Howard Magdal, High Post Hoops. Uh, Japri, question for you. You and Tori spoke at halftime uh, before you guys went into the locker room. I'm curious what that conversation was like and um, how you sort of took that into the third quarter where you guys made the run that you did. Um, she just encouraged me like she always does and just told me to stay aggress aggressive despite my shooting and, and just to encourage the team and, and lead and just stay on attack mode. 
question. Yep, go ahead, over here on the right. Thank you. Uh, Kennedy and Chaprice, Blake Richardson with the LA Times. I was just um, wondering, now that the season is over, what are you kind of most proud of, of the team sort of reflecting back? You said ind individually or as a team? Uh, as a team. Um, I just think that I, this particular year, this team was really special. Even though we didn't start off well, we showed that we could fight and we could that, that we can compete with any team. And this team is going to go a long way next year, and I'm excited for them. Japrice, anything to add? Yeah, I'm just proud of how how we kept going despite the beginning of our season and what outsiders were saying and who we lost and who we don't have. Um, and how people stepped up into different <laughs> roles and how we just stayed level-headed through any game we played. I feel like the Pac-12 um, got us ready for these type of games. And, and it was just amazing to see how people stepped up and how people led. And, and it was just great. We have a question over here on the left. Christopher Lopez, SoCal News Group. Um, when Lindsey Corsaro hit that three at the top of the circle and you all go up by five, what's going through your head uh, for Kennedy and Japris? Kennedy? Um, I think in that moment, I was just excited for this team because um, Lindsay hit a big shot, and we could counter her to make those big shots in the games, and um, we just had to continue that in on the defensive end. And even though things didn't go our way, I'm still proud of her confidence. And just th like th throughout this entire year, she's always like been a leader for us, and I just I'm really proud of her. I think mostly after that stop, I was just thinking about defense and trying to get another stop so we can go on our run and don't let them go on there. So mostly just trying to get a stop after that big shot. Question here to the right. Kennedy and Dupreeze, congrats on a wonderful season. Um, I was wondering if you could both speak about the house that Corey, Coach Corey talks about throughout the whole season, this house that you guys are building. And kind of even though you guys fell short today, what did what did that house look like to you guys, and what did that mean to you guys? Japrice, if we could start with you, please. Um, I think we built a mansion, honestly. <laughs> um, people stepped up, like I said before, in the huge roles, and no one was scared, and no one backed down, and like I could respect that so much. And the house just consists of, I don't know, just people doing different things and staying together and being one and being expected to win games. and and trust in the process. She, she never wavered when we were losing games in the beginning. She knew what we could do. And credit to Coach Corey, she, stayed, she kept us encouraged. And, and we decided that we were going to be encouraged and stay together. Yeah, I would have to agree with her. Um, I think the biggest thing was just believing in ourselves, um, having confidence in ourselves. And yeah. We have a question over here on the left. Marvin Chambers, 4.0 Sports Media. Both of you guys, after you guys went up and they went to a 1 3 1 press um, and then they asserted Olivia, how did that affect your guys' offense during the second half? Kennedy, if you would. Um, I think when they made that change in their defense, we, if someone drives, we weren't really moving off of the ball. I think we were standing and watching a lot, and it just made us uh, throw up shots that we didn't really want. Um, but I think overall we just showed a fight. So. Yeah, I would just say it slowed us down. I think that he knows that we can get out and transition and run. So I think it was a great tactic just to slow us down. Question here on the right. Hi, actually one, one for each of you. Uh, Japrice, getting that extra year of eligibility, does that make it easier when you think about sort of what you've built and what there is left to do? And Kennedy, I'm, I'm just curious if you could reflect on what the culture is that's been built that when she got that extra year, there's a dog pile and there's such joy, mm -hmm. obviously, that went along with that. So I'm sorry for each um, and Terry. I think the year is great. I mean, right now, it obviously hurts that we lost the game, so I'm not really thinking about the extra year. But um, credit to everyone that helped me and supported me through that process to get in the extra year. And I appreciate my teammates for being happy for me. But as far as right now, I'm just kind of reflecting on this season. Um, when I heard that, when we heard that Jabrice was going to gain the next year, I was just excited for the team. And even though when we heard the news, it was, st it was still like during the time where we were preparing for this tournament, um, I just knew that she would take us all the way a long ways. And I'm just excited for her. And she's going to lead this team next year. 
and she's gonna do great things for them. Any additional questions for our student athletes? Seeing none, ladies, thank you for doing this. Yeah, Congratulations on a terrific season. Uh, up here on the right, we have coaches, uh, questions for the coach. Doug? Corey, congrats on a good season Thanks, for you guys. Doug. Same thing I asked Kennedy. I mean, that run to start the fourth quarter was just defensive stops they were getting. What, what was the difference in that? that well, I, I think they, you know, their strength is their offensive execution. And I thought they asserted the will of their strength more than our strength, which is uh, defense, rebounding, getting downhill in transition, right? So, you know, which team can play to their strengths in those pressurized moments? And the reality is they played to theirs. And so uh, they, they, we had to stop switching. We went to something completely different where we had three people that were switching screens and two people that were chasing. Um, and, you know, uh, credit them. I also thought, though, the big difference was some of those big shots by Dangerfield. Those were really the backbreakers. They came in. I thought we regrouped after their 6-0 run. And you know, I think we scored, and, and I think we were, I still had a good confidence about us. Um, but I saw our demeanor change when Dangerfield hit a couple of those big shots late in the shot clock. And, and a couple of them were just good defense, better offense. And, and I thought that's when I saw sort of a little bit of a doubt creep in our eyes. Thank you. Question up here to the right. Jim Clark, Women's Hoops World. Um, kind of building onto that, um, you controlled the pace throughout, even though you're a running team and you kept them deep into the shot clock, but in the fourth quarter, it didn't work so well. No, it didn't. What happened there? Well, I think we weren't able to control the flow on offense, and, and to your question about the, the press, it really put us in a more standstill, you know, one pass, make a read, and there was not a lot of rhythm. You know, what you saw in their offense was a lot of rhythm, was a lot of fluidity, and when they did their press and we, uh, we sort of got on our heels and we, we didn't ever get our rhythm back and getting players shots and rhythm and credit their defense. They, they really did, stepped up and, and made what we wanted to run hard. And, and they obviously their game plan was to give us jumpers and see if we could hit them. And we had a harder time with that today. That's about as, um, it's about as worst game of shooting as we've had in a long time. I didn't think we could have a you know 26% again in the second half. But uh, credit them, their defense, they rolled the dice on that and it worked for them. And it wasn't our best shooting night. But um, the reality was I just think they played with a rhythm and fluidity and we weren't able to find ours after that point. Thank you. Question here at Howard. Hi, Corey. Hi, Howard. So obviously you said 26 years, it doesn't get easier at the yeah. end. But you are you have a different group in a different spot. You know, and there's yeah. so much talent coming back next year and a great class coming in. And I just I wonder whether you process it differently now and if it is easier or just different to process it in the coming days? Well, it'll be, dis it'll be uh, easier in a couple weeks. Um, you know, I think the reality is is that um, <clears throat> we didn't, I just love this group of young women. So right now, all I'm thinking about is these young women and my responsibility to lead them in our mission as a program and to, to help them be their best as young women, as representatives of the university, as students, and as, and of course, of competitive athletes. And so, um, I'm excited about what we've had. I've been excited about it all year and very thankful that we're now in a place in our program that our culture is feeding itself and our recruiting is becoming very consistent. And so uh, I have a lot to be proud of in terms of what my staff really, they, give, they get so much credit for what we have built. But right now I just, uh, I see the eyes and the faces of these young women that I love very much and that are really disappointed and, but have grown immensely. We have a question on the right and then two on the left. Corey, uh, Blake. what will you remember the most about this season reflecting on this team? One of our core values is a growth mindset. And, um, and I, I also will, and, and they did that. They just every week got better. And every week, it got to the point in about mid-January, I started texting the leadership group uh, the, the day before our week started and said, what does our emphasis need to be this week? And the first part of the year, the staff would come up with that. Like, what are the musts? How do we have to grow this week? 
And from about mid-January on, our leadership group decided that. And they were really the drivers of the growth of this team. And the other thing I'll remember about this team is that um, they didn't let anyone on the outside define who they could become. They didn't let a lack of expectation or too much expectation. They were like, no, I'm going to define who I can become individually, and we are going to define ourselves, what we can become collectively. And, um, you know, it takes a lot of guts as an 18 to 23-year-old in this day and age, and, and I'm really proud of how they learned to define who they wanted to be. And that's something that's not only helped our team this year, but that's going to stay with them uh, for the rest of their lives. And I'm really thankful that they have that moment to refer to. Thank you. Question here on the left. Hi, Coach. Um, Azar from MV Magazine. My question is to you. Um, I saw you in a Bridgeport bracket when you guys upset Maryland before. Then you come back now this year and you, you beat Maryland and people kind of seemed like it was an upset because you were not number six seed. Sure. And then coming into going against UConn, people kind of probably felt like you were going to get blown out. But you always give UConn a fight. You don't go away. Do you guys feel like Coming in, do you guys feel like you were getting the respect that you deserve? I don't know. I just always, you know, Coach Wooden had a quote that if you um, focus on things that are out of your control, it adversely affects the things that are under your control. And I just can't control that. And I think it goes back to what I just said in terms of we just didn't let that stuff define us. Um, you know, we really believed in the matchup. We believed in if we played to our best that we, we could win. And, you know, we had a, a period of about – about six minutes that we didn't play our best and we didn't win. And but um, I don't really think that ever phased us, honestly. I, I really, you know, every day I would just look in their eyes and I'm like, are they are they ready to battle again for another week? And they were ready. Every time I looked at them, they responded. We have a a phrase about we and we talked about it several times in the game is that all we can control is our R, which is our response. And if you don't like your outcome, then you better change your R. And over and over again, these women just responded over and over. And um, so, you know, I didn't really give it a second thought, and I don't think our players did either. Thank you. Another question on the left? Coach, uh, I asked the players this same question when Lindsey Corsero hit that three to put you up by five. What's going through your head knowing that you had, you know, completed sort of a comeback in, in the sense of um, you're back yeah. in the game, you're up five. What's going through your head in terms of holding UConn? Well, I think I thought the same thing as Japrice. I don't think we're, we really ride the waves of that. You know, I, I think if we did, we would we're gonna be in big trouble. I think it was really a possession by possession game. So, you know, obviously as those things happen, you believe deeper and deeper, like we can do this. And so, you know, I'd be lying if it didn't fuel our belief. I'm sure it did. Um, but I really do think it was a next play mentality. You know, what, do I, what is required of me for this possession? And so, you know, yeah, but I didn't think we started believing then. I think we believed throughout and maybe it grew, but uh, I think it was just, what do I need to do to help our team get one more stop? Howard, on the right here. Thanks, Corey. Two, two they're kind of unrelated, completely unrelated. Okay. Um, one, just a real quick, you talked about uh, empowering your leadership team. It was a timeout when you were down 55-50. You delayed about a minute before you went over. You let the players speak, and then you brought in. Was that what the idea was behind it, was empowering the leadership team? Well, I think always. I think that, you know, at this point in the year that I can't control it all. And I think all year long, we don't want to have a program that has a bunch of plays and that I have to call the most brilliant game in order for us to win. I want our players to not only feel empowered, but to be equipped with their skill, with their belief, with their confidence, with their communication. And, you know, I think in March, players have got to be feel empowered to make plays. And so I did the same thing at halftime. I said, you know, what are you guys talking about? What are you seeing? And, um, you know, I, I trust them. And they've earned that trust. I didn't give them that trust. They earned that trust. And, you know, I want them, you know, I think about most of them want to go on and play professional basketball. So I have a parallel mission to help us reach our potential, to help them grow as people, and then to prepare them for their next set of dreams. And at the next level, you know, they got to be able to think and make plays and adjust to new coaches and different styles quickly. And they they got to be empowered to think on their own and if they want to make those next steps. And, and then that's actually lead into my, to my next question, which is, you know, you're no stranger to seeing players make that leap to the W. Opposite number in Nafisa Collier obviously is on her way. What do you see as her game at the next level? What do you think she will do best 
for her WNBA team when she gets there? Well, she, you know, it's interesting. She's a little bit different than Kennedy Burke in some ways, but similar in, in others. They're very versatile. Um, I think it's going to depend on who drafts her and what system she is. But I think that her ability to make an impact no matter where she goes or what system she's in, I mean, she's a machine. Um, she is so active away from the ball. She plays great defense on the perimeter as well as in the post. Um, you know, her, her post game was obviously where they took advantage tonight, but over the course of scouting, her ability to take the ball off the bounce and attack that way, um, as she grows in her confidence to shooting the ball as well as her, she's just scratching the surface. But her consistency of tempo and, and her ability to affect the game in so many different ways, uh, you know, she's obviously got a really bright future. But I feel similarly about Kennedy Burke. I think she's an elite defender, and she's a matchup nightmare, and she's just scratching the surface as well. So I think you see two really versatile players that are going to make their uh, impact in the WNBA. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. <clears throat> Coach, thank you very much for doing yeah. this. Congratulations on a wonderful season. Well, thank you guys for covering our game and helping us grow our game. <clears throat>
for Crystal, that fourth quarter run, you guys scored the first six points in a 15-4 run. I think you had nine of your 15 in that stretch. Did you just sense you had to do something offensively to get this team going? Was it what they were giving you? What was the difference in that fourth quarter for you and for the team? Uh, it was really uh, taking what the defense was giving us. Uh, coach challenged uh, us at halftime to get into the paint, um, uh, not really looking for fouls, but just going in there to score. And he wanted to make sure that we had a balance of inside shots and outside shots. Thank you. Additional questions? Over here on the left, mm -hmm. Michelle. Yeah, this is uh, Michelle Vogel from ESPN.com. Nafisa, can you address what Coach was saying? Just, it just they are so UCLA. Um, not that you guys aren't incredibly athletic, but they're so athletic, and they're they're just they just get in your business on everything. Can you just talk about that and how you guys were able to keep your composure throughout the game with that? Yeah, <clears throat> they're incredibly, like you said, athletic and physical, and um, they're all you know kind of the same tall height. So. Our biggest thing tonight was rebounding, and while these two did amazing today, especially as they addressed Crystal in the fourth quarter, um, I was really proud of Megan Walker and how um, we talked before the game about how it's really going to decide us rebounding and boxing out, and I thought she did an amazing job. I think she had 11 rebounds, so I definitely want to give a lot of credit to her, and um, I think we're all going to need to soak in an ice bath tonight. <laughs> it was really physical, but um, we grinded it out, and I'm just so proud of um, how we played tonight. Thank you. Another question here on the left. <clears throat> Marvin Chambers, 4.0 Sports Media. Nafisa, you just talked about how physical it was. Um, talk about when you guys went second half, the one three one zone press. You guys kind of stagnate the offense. Do you think that was the turning point of the game? Um, yeah, I thought our press was really disruptive for them. I thought it made them kind of slow down and have to um, do things that they're not comfortable with. And uh, the press is something that we like to do a lot. I think you know we're pretty good at it, and we do disrupt teams. So I thought that was a good turning point for us. Thank you. Question here to the right. Mike Logan, Daily Campus. Uh, Kristen's questions for you. Uh, first off, how are you feeling after that that big leap? Uh, and second of all, um, <laughs> um, can you just talk about how you came out of the the game? You really started the aggressiveness uh, for the whole team. Yeah, I'm okay, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. I was just going off after the ball. I'm perfectly fine. Um, you know, Coach always is on, is on me about being aggressive from the jump. So that was my mindset going into the game, um, is being aggressive at all times. Um, and I thought I executed well. So, yeah, that was my mindset. <laughs> Additional questions over here on the right, Howard? Howard McDowell with High Post Tubes. And if he's a question for you, you've gotten to a point where the 2010s are just automatic, and it seems like you decide early on to take control of these games. I'm wondering how much of that um, is directly coming from you and how much of that is coming from just uh, what defenses are allowing to happen. Um, I think it's a mixture of a lot of things. Obviously, I try to work as hard as I can to get positioned and get in a place where um, I can be successful with the ball, but my team does a great job also of um, getting me the ball. Like I said, we're in the places that I want to be successful. So um, I think just being aggressive from the jump is what I've been trying to do a lot. And um, like I said, kind of just finding position early and uh, ceiling, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we have a follow up. Just wait for the microphone, if you would, Howard. And then we have a question on the left. Thanks. I'm just curious when that changed for you, when you decided it was important to be aggressive right away. At what, what point in your UConn career did that happen? Um, I mean, it, it kind of happened more so uh, my sophomore year, just because my freshman year I was just, you know, freshman floating around, didn't really know what I was doing. And sophomore year I knew Kayla and I would have a bigger role, so I knew that I would have to be more aggressive, and I thought I kind of got away from that last year. So I knew coming into this year that I never wanted to do that again, and I wanted to kind of change my mindset and never ever, like doubt myself or be timid or anything like that. So I kind of came into this year knowing that I wanted to be more aggressive. Thank you. Question on the left? Uh, Danny Barletta, um, UCTV. Uh, I have a question for Crystal. So you guys got down a little bit in that third quarter. How important was it for you guys to stop that at five and then just kind of hang back in until you went in on that run in the fourth quarter? 
I was huge. You know, um, <clears throat> basketball is a game of runs. You know, we were going to have ours. They were going to have theirs. And I think uh, it was a matter of getting one stop. And once we did that, I think we got out and transition a little. Uh, Lou got that big steal. We were hitting our shots, going to the free throw line, and uh, things of that nature. And I think that really turned the game for us. You know, it's not always going to go in your favor, but I think tonight we, we did what was necessary, getting a big rebound, like V said about Meg. She came in and she did her job tonight, and I think that was the game changer. What, a question over here on the left, Michelle. Yeah, I did. This is for Crystal. Coach was just saying that at this time of the year it's about making big plays. Did you have a moment, you know, you look up at the scoreboard, you guys are down by one, you've got ten minutes left. Did you have a moment in yourself where you thought, this is my time, I have to make big plays? Um, not necessarily that it's my time, but it was just that a play had to be made. And he kind of said it after the game. We didn't know where it was going to come from, but that it was definitely going to happen. And that's the kind of confidence that we've kind of grown to have in each other over the course of this season. And um, again, it was just really taking what the defense was giving us. And that was really where the run was coming from. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for our student athletes? Yes, one over here, Vicki. Uh, it just seemed in that in that fourth quarter, you guys stayed so poised. Like Crystal just said, you you kind of knew that was coming, or just just the composure that you guys had when UCLA was you know kind of jacking up shots and everything. Just can you speak to that for a second? <laughs> well, I think we've had a lot of practice, honestly, with it this year. Um, there's been a lot of games where we've been down at one point, at some point in the game, and so. Um, as you know, hard as it was, obviously, to lose those games and to kind of have a different dynamic this year, having that experience is what I think is going to help us down the road and helped us today because we're not getting flustered in those situations. We know that we've been there. We know that we have the fight to push back and to come back from those, which is exactly what we did tonight. So, um, you know, like I said, as hard as it was to go through it during the year, grinding it out, I think it's definitely something that's prepared us for this tournament. Thank you. Ladies, thank you very much for joining us. Congratulations on the win, and good luck to you on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Question over here for Coach Ariema on the left. Marvin Chambers, 4.0 Sports Media. Coach. Last three years, you've seen Crystal Dangerfield really develop in front of your eyes, being more physical, taking on a bigger role, dribble drive, <laughs> penetration, overall, from the freshman year to now, what do you see the, her biggest asset to now? <clears throat> well, I, I mean, basketball uh, always, you know, as much as people want to say, you know, when they talk about a dominant big man, you know, Basketball is dictated by the people that have the ball in their hands the majority of the time. And it's, it's always been my feeling that if you have, you know, really good guards on your team, then you have a chance to have a really good team, provided you have some of the other pieces. But I think Crystal's biggest adjustment or biggest growth has come from uh, taking on more personal accountability, more responsibility. Um, I think as you as you grow in our program, you start to see that um, at some point it's going to be all on you. And you know, her freshman year and her sophomore year, you know, she had a lot of people around her that if she didn't play well or something didn't go right, uh, could bail her out. And now she's in a situation where she looks around and says, "It's all on me." And I think sometimes that forces you to to hold yourself more accountable, to to understand like today, if I don't make these plays, it's not gonna it's, it's not gonna happen and we're gonna lose because I can't expect Chris, Kristen to do it, you know? And Lou isn't gonna have the ball in her hands. So I gotta get her the ball. But in the meantime, I gotta I gotta make sure we win this game. And um, that's part of growing up. For sure. Thank you. Up here to the right, Doug. Uh, Doug Feinberg, the AP. Gina, you mentioned f there were four and a half 
was it Lou's back that was an issue today? Is something different? I'm assuming that's the half you're referring to. And well, no, I meant like, you know, we, we got some great mileage out of Chris, um, Liv. You know, I thought Olivia played really, really well in the, in the minutes that, uh, that she got. Uh, yeah, I mean, Lou's mobility is not the same as it was, you know. I'm sure that her back is still an issue. Um, but it was made, it was compounded by how, how long and how athletic they are and how physical the game was. I mean, you would never know it, but it was kind of physical. We didn't necessarily shoot a lot of free throws, but it was physical. And um, I don't know that Lou's mobility was, was where it needs to be, and she really struggled, really struggled. Um, you know, we went in at halftime, what, up five? And Lou and Crystal didn't score. So we kind of felt okay. You know, I thought Lou would do something in the second half. You know, I never thought that her big moment would be on a defensive play. That's like the biggest shocker of the night. And a three-point play. Question here on the right, Howard? <laughs> Hi, Gino. Uh, Howard Mandel, High Post Tubes. So uh, I'm just curious, you know, seeing Corey and what she's built from the outside, I mean, a couple years ago, they played you relatively tough, but obviously it wasn't at the same level, wasn't the same sort of challenge. It is in the Sweet 16 now. I'm wondering what that view is uh, for you from the outside, but also what you think it says about the state of women's basketball that there are more quarries building. There are more programs that can challenge in a round that isn't necessarily a challenge in the past for Blue Bloods. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I mean, generally speaking, two things have to happen to try to even the playing field. Uh, the teams that are at the top have to come back a little bit, and the teams that are trying to catch them have to come up a little bit. Because for a bunch of years, the teams at the top, and I know because we were one of them, we just kept getting better every year. So no matter how hard other people worked, the gap was always the same and was actually getting worse. Well, that started to change, you know. The, the, the teams like UCLA with what Corey's done, they've gotten progressively better over the years. And the cycle was going to change, you know. All those teams that used to dominate the top They've kind of come back to earth a little bit. So it's made a much more competitive game. More people are in the mix, you know. We've been to, what, 11 straight Final Fours? That's probably not, I mean, not healthy for me, but it's probably something that's, you know, should be impossible to do in, a, in, a, in, in the real world of competitive sports. It should not be possible to go that many years in a row. And it's going to get much, much more difficult each and every year from here on in. And there's a lot of good young coaches out there. You know, I, I, and at a place like UCLA, you almost had to say to yourself, how could you not? I mean, you know, but UCLA, Oregon, Oregon State, you know, I mean, just those three out there, you know. She's done a great job. She's done a great job. Question on the left. Hey, Coach. It's um, Azar from NV Online. Um, the question, you, I'm pretty sure you've heard this many times since the tournament started. You came in as a number two seed, which was shocking to a lot of people. Um, and even though you're winning, um, you're not blowing teams out by 40 or 50 points. How much of an edge does that give you going forward? And how much edge has it given you in this tournament? Uh, that's a hard one um, to answer because, uh, you know, a lot of times those emotional things, that, they, that doesn't last a long time. You know, when people talk about, you know, you bring a, a ton of emotion to a game, at some point you're going to have to, you're going to have to win the game with, your, with how good you are, not how emotional you are. So there was a, there was a point in today's game during one of the timeouts where we, we looked like we were in trouble. The look on their face looked like they were in trouble. 
because we couldn't get anything to drop. We couldn't get a call. They started burying threes. So it's like, well, what are we going to do? We can't guard them inside if we have to go out. You know, so we're going to have to give something up. And, um, and it looked like we're, like, searching. But then all of a sudden, something happened. And I think they remembered that we're UConn. And this is what we do. And it doesn't always work. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes it just doesn't happen. But, you know, there's just enough times with four or five minutes left in a game. Our kids need to be reminded sometimes. We're still UConn, you know. We're not gonna, we're not gonna die easily. It's not not gonna be that easy to get rid of us. And I think that that does come from this little whatever you're carrying around with you. That no one's picked us to win it. I don't think. But I don't know that that's gonna help you win a game. We have a question on the right. Coach Mike Logan, Daily Campus. Um, Olivia had a huge block in the beginning of the fourth quarter. Um, what did she mean to the shift in momentum, obviously defensively for you guys? It changes what we look like, obviously. You know, uh, against their size and their athletic ability, they're just bigger than us at every position um, on the front line. So putting Liv in there changes what we look like. So we look like can never use the word Olivia and imposing in the same sentence, but we look, you know, long and, and it is kind of disruptive and, and she's able to, uh, just by her presence, you know, um, I, I, think, I think she was a big, big factor in tonight's game. Even without having to score a lot of points or do anything spectacular on the stat sheet, just having her out there, I think was, a, and she looked like she belonged out there. Like her look on the bench was like, yeah, I, I got this, coach. So. We have time for one more. Vicki on the <clears> left. <throat> um, Gina, so did you remind them that you're still UConn and that you're not going to die easily? Like you said in, in that timeout, you said uh, they, they needed to be reminded or no, they, they, no. they figured it out themselves? Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't say anything. I think uh, CD noticed it. Um, it, it didn't come from it didn't come from me or any of the coaches. I think I think it took us getting down five to really uh, change how we were looking at the game. You know, I think the whole time we were winning, when we were up, it was like, yeah, okay, well, we'll figure out a way to to win it. But when we got down five, I think there was a sense of, uh oh. Now we need to dig down deeper and we need to find something. And, uh, and we did, we did. It was, uh, I was probably more proud of them in that fourth quarter, this particular group of players than any time since they've been at Connecticut. Cause this one, they really, it was all on their shoulders and they had to win it. And then Gabby's not gonna bail you out with some superhuman plays. You know, Kia's not gonna lock up their best player on the perimeter. You know, they had to do it on their own. And uh, I, I, was, I was really proud of them. They showed us a lot tonight. Coach, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate For it. For additional comments with Coach Oriema, please see Anna. And as a reminder, all additional interviews should be done at the secondary media interview room towards the locker room area. Thank you. Uh, they go in the back, yeah. Thank you, guys. Good job. Okay.